If you're in business, hire slow and fire fast. Yep. If you don't do it, you kill the mothership. You yep. have to keep revenue coming in. Now, most of you that make 500 grand a year, you're only reporting 35 grand. You might even be reporting <laughs> I'm really loss. smart. I'm not the IRS. I could give a darn what you do. He's a G. Yeah. So you paid $7,500 more in interest, but you saved $80,000 in taxes? Come on. Yep. That's a no-brainer for me. Fear is killing you. It's literally yeah. destroying you. You might have had a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah, he's got the bigger boat. <laughs> You're watching Shift Happens Beyond the Boxes, where we take a look at the inner workings of the moving industry. Hey guys, Jason Berginski here from Shift Happens uh, Beyond the Boxes podcast. Today I got my good friend Bruce with me. He's actually my yacht neighbor. Uh, we both keep our boats over in Daytona, and uh, I often see him with, with lots of people on his boat and partying. Maybe a little no, too much. No, not, never no, parting. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> so uh, anyway, he is in the uh, mortgage industry. Uh, has been in for I think over thirty years. Thirty five years. And uh, you know, has definitely gone through the mortgage industry of during the 08 recession, uh, the COVID era, and then obviously what we're in currently. The so hey days and the hell days. Yeah. So I uh, brought him on. I think he has a ton of insight of uh, the industry that we're also in. I think we're very closely knit in the sense of um, the industry we're in is very closely attached to, to you guys as well because it's all revolving around the housing market. Most certainly is. So so anyway, thank you for being on. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, you know, I think that your business and my business are closely related in many facets. But at the end of the day, all businesses thrive when the real estate industry is doing well. Sure. I don't care if you're a plumber, if you're selling cars, if you're selling whatever it is, when the housing industry is doing well, everybody's doing well. When the housing industry is not doing so well, not so much. Yep. And since uh, March of 2022, we've seen quite a decline. Um, and, uh, and I think that most of it is just because of fear of the economy yep. and interest rates. Interest rates are the elephant in the room right now. And they are what's keeping people from moving forward. Right now, I think a lot of folks may be uh, apprehensive to move forward, um, even because of waiting for what's going to happen with the election. Sure. I mean, obviously, I think most self-employed business people feel that Trump is going to do better for us. Yep. Things, the economy is going to do better. Uh, I do believe that as well. It was interesting because some numbers came out uh, last week, and the bond market had some uh, some negative uh, negative turns uh, due to the foreign markets feeling that Trump may be a little bit too inflationary. Yep. But I'll take Trump's inflationary policies over <laughs> Biden's crushed businesses policies yeah. any day of the week. Yeah. And I think we've definitely felt that as well. Uh, obviously, Trump's not for everyone. He doesn't have to be your best friend, but I don't care if you I'll like honest, him or not. Yeah. I mean, our business and I think the moving industry, the housing industry uh, in general did better under his administration. Yeah. Um, obviously, he got hit with COVID, uh, you know, during his his term, which obviously was a big blow. Sure was. But that's to any president that would have been in office during that time. I think so. and nobody handled it better than he did. Yep. So, yeah, we talk about a lot of these issues on my radio show. I'm currently, I currently host two radio shows for 25 years. I've been on WDBO uh, on Saturdays. That's 580 AM and 107.3 HD FM. Uh, you can see me, you can listen to me Saturdays uh, from noon to one and Sundays from 11 to 12. And then if you're down in the Tampa market, I'm on 102.5 The Bone on Sundays excuse me, Saturdays from 11 to 12. So we talk about all these issues in real estate. We talk about finance. We talk yep. about challenges that people have, opportunities that they have. And I think, Jason, that I think a lot of people are a little bit reluctant to get into the market. And it's not that much different than they were after the recession. Sure. And a lot of people may, maybe have forgotten about the recession and how drastic and dr traumatic that was. But that was caused by bad mortgages, mortgage companies doing mortgages for people that never should have qualified yep. for them. When you work flipping hamburgers at McDonald's, you're not making four hundred thousand a yep. year. Yeah, they were and, doing. And they were all what, stated. A lot of them were stated. They income, were stated right? income. Yeah. Now there's prudent underwriting. We don't see that happening anymore. People actually have to qualify for their mortgage, but they're apprehensive because interest rates are higher, homeowners insurance is higher, but housing prices even in a soft market have gone up 5% per year. Yep. 
And that's a soft market. What do you think is going to happen oh, yeah. to the market when interest rates drop to five and a quarter again? Yep. Yep. They're going to go way up. We're going to see a huge increase. Matter of fact, um, I was listening to Barbara Cochran from the Shark Tank, mega real estate agent. Yep. She believes that home prices will go up sharply up to 15% yep. when rates hit the mid fives. Yeah. So you can either buy now and refi later, or you can wait to pay a whole lot more for your home. Then you're going to be into bidding war. Remember what it was like during COVID when everyone is oh, yeah. buying, but you had to pay over ask price. The seller wasn't going to make repairs. Seller's not going to pay oh, yeah. any of your closing costs. Take it or leave it. They didn't Take care. it or leave it. Yep. You got another one lined up, right? Yep. yep. So I think that right now is a really good opportunity. I think that people are getting in their own way. They're stepping over dollars to pick up pennies and it's all because of fear, but fear does not get you anywhere. Yep. Yeah. False evidence appearing real. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of it. And part of like, uh, so there's, I obviously have some rental homes. I think you do as well. I do as well. And some triplexes and stuff like that. And purchasing them during the uh, COVID, after COVID, but when the interest rates were 2.9, 3%. Um, And I picked up a few during that time, but sellers weren't doing anything for you. No, It was... You know, you had one of five people that were going to buy the home and you just hoped you were the one that came in the highest Minimum and, five. And, and did exactly. Yeah. Minimum five. Um, yeah. And now uh, I've purchased a few things uh, since interest rates have gone up mm-hmm. and sellers are begging you to take the stuff. They'll because pay closing they'll costs, pay closing, they'll make they'll, repairs, correct. they'll do whatever you need them to do to yep. get a buyer into the market right now. Yep. They, and I think that is what is people are not taking advantage of right now. So yes, it is true. The interest rates are higher and your mortgage is going to be more expensive than it was at 2.9%. But I don't know that we're going to see 2.9%. I don't again. think you'll, I don't <laughs> think you'll see even if we see the fours, it'll be the high fours. And I don't anticipate that happening anytime soon, but you have to remember the average interest rate over the last 40 years is 7.6%. Yeah. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I was reading some data because Right now, the elephant in the room with my clients is interest rates. I'm going to sure. wait. I'm going to wait. I'll wait for interest rates to drop. So 1971. Yep. Interest rates was were like 7.33%. Yep. Yeah. If you decided to wait for interest rates to drop, you would wait 22 years. When well, the 80s, it went up to like 18% or something, didn't it? Housing prices quadrupled during yeah. that time frame. Yeah. So waiting is a mistake. Yes. So interest rates back, and that was that was Carter administration. Sure. Uh, and then once uh once Reagan got into office, things you know with Reagan got yeah. under control. But yeah, we saw interest rates in the 14%. And yeah. uh and y- y- we don't want that. I don't see that happening. Um, but you can see what inflation does oh, yeah. to interest rate. It erodes the value of money. Yep. yep. So yeah, but right now I'm seeing opportunities. I'm looking to buy, I'm looking at possibly building a duplex for some rental income. Yep. Um, I, I, I believe, and, and I, I tell you, Jason, you, you probably don't know this about me. My listeners on my radio show do, because I came out of my shell. I came out of my closet. Okay. <laughs> and I, decided I really needed to be real and genuine with my listeners yep. and my customers. And so I had confessed that I was a 10th grade dropout. I did not yep. finish the 10th grade. My mom died when I was 15. And my dad died eight months later from a heart attack. Oh, I was 15 years old. I was orphaned. I quit school in the middle of the 10th grade. I tried to go back and take some college. It just wasn't for me. Sure. And I realized that I should either do drugs and be a drug dealer or learn how to make money in business. Yep. Which yeah. road do you think I took? Yeah, I mean, obviously business. Yeah, I'm not doing any, I'm I, not doing any I, drugs. I don't think you're running drugs. I'm not doing any drugs, right? <laughs> so, but I decided that, and it was, it was through people that helped and mentored me. And for sure. people, we all need people that care about us, yep. but if we don't listen to them, Jason, and take action, action, I, I would rather do something and make a mistake than not do anything at all. For sure. And I think that in business, we have to learn how to do that. We take risks every day. Life is not about not having risk, just mitigate your risk. Yeah. But People came to me and mentored me and helped me. And now I run a multi-million dollar branch. Sure. And I have had more success 
than I ever dreamed I would have. Yep. I, I like you said, I own a yacht. I have a beautiful home on a ski lake and yep. boats and jet skis. And I'm able to do anything in life that I truly want to do within yep. reason. Sure. And I owe that to taking action. Yep. And I think the people sitting on the sidelines and waiting for life to happen and waiting for circumstances and being victims. Listen, there's no time to be a victim. If you made a mistake, good. Pull up your big boy pants and yep. let's move on. And when I think about that, I think about my business. I think about your business. I think about our listeners out there. You are helping so many people with Move It Pro develop and develop this software to make their lives easier to do to be in the moving business. Yep. But that alone won't make you successful. Yeah. You have to go out and find customers. Sure. And so if business is slow, you're cutting back on budgets. You may even have to lay some people off, but you cannot stop your efforts to for your branding, reaching out to customers, whether it's radio, TV, advertisements. I mean, we we talked a little bit about Who's omnipresent in my industry sure. and who's omnipresent in, present in the moving industry? So in my industry, if I ask somebody on the street, name one mortgage company that you can you know of off the top of your head. They're going to probably say Rocket Mortgage. Yeah, from TV commercials. They they, probably because they that. spend yep. millions yep. in TV commercials. Or they might say RP funding or something yep. that they've seen in the past on commercials. Uh, both of them are great businesses, sure. wonderful businesses. Robert's a personal friend of mine and he's a competitor, but they're omnipresent. So you yeah. know who they are. Yep. If you want your business to be mega successful, you cannot be obscure and people don't know who you are because yep. you could have the best moving company, the best service, the best employees. But if nobody knows who you are, you're sitting back there waiting for the phone <laughs> to ring. ring. And that's exactly, and I think we would mention that was, you know, that's one of Grant Cardone's quotes is Absolutely. that uh, you, it's it's not who's best known. No, sorry. It's not who's the best product. It's who's the best known. Absolutely. Um, and it's exactly that. Like you literally could have the best service, the best product, the best whatever it is. But if no one knows about it, no one knows what it is or how it works or knows you, you're never going to get the business. I see that in every yep. business, real estate agents. You know, I've met some real estate agents that are really good at what they do. Sure. I trust them with my customers, but they don't do a lot of business. Sure. They're not top producers because they don't know how to go out and get the business. Yep. Yep. And whoever brings in the business is the one that makes the most money. Yep. Bring in the business. Yep. And one of the other things you brought up was really interesting about the victim mentality. And I feel like, uh, I'm obviously a little bit younger generation than you, mm -hmm. but even in my life, I've seen the change over the last 10 to 15 years of the victim mentality of people in general. The entitlement. The entitlement. Yeah. And um, it's it's a sad yet disgusting thing to see nonstop of- it's Such a waste of human you know, talent too. Yeah. And it's like the way I was raised and I assume the way you were raised was like, everything that's going on in your life is because of you, good or bad. And that's it. Like, and your income is the result <laughs> of your effort. Correct. Yep. And, and that doesn't mean everything we touch turns to gold. I make tons of mistakes. I'm, sure. matter of fact, <laughs> listen expert. to me, I'm an expert at making mistakes. Okay. <laughs> Same. All right. Just live with yep. it. And yep. don't, don't let it beat you down. Don't just because something didn't work. Doesn't mean what you did doesn't work. It means you need to go back, reanalyze. Uh, don't, again, don't be a victim. What could I have done better? What could I have done different? What could I have said different? What, yep. and we're, you know, it's funny when, when Jason and I are talking about this whole podcast, we're looking at systems that we have that we don't even use. Right. Yeah. So, and that might be in your business. You have tools to use. Are you using them? Are you maximizing your efforts? Yeah. Right. Yep. And I think that's a big part of, you know, in, in these moving companies and in real estate businesses or mortgage brokers, right now is the time you almost should be doing the most in your marketing, your advertising, those things. Because when it's, when times are hot and it's busy, you don't have time for it. There's no time. You know? You've got, you got business coming in the door right now is a great time to go back and analyze what your business looks like. What, if I could design the perfect business, yeah. what would that look like? And put a business to plan together. I don't think a lot of self-employed people spend enough time working on their business plan, their efforts, analyzing it. 
taking information from your employees and your customers? Do you survey your customers? What did you like? What didn't you like? Yeah. Be open to those suggestions. You need negative feedback and positive feedback, but you will not grow with positive feedback. Yeah. You will stay the same. It's the negative feedback that will help you grow your business. So you need to go, Hey, Bruce, I didn't like it when you did this. I don't <laughs> like it when you do that. Stop doing that. Yep. And then, and great. What did you like? I like this, this, and this. Okay. Do more of that. Yep. Right. Yep. Do less of this. And it's, it's being open to allowing that to happen is the big thing. You better be open you know? in business. You have yep. to, and you know what? And, and Jason, as we evolve, my business today isn't the same as my business was 25 years sure. ago. I operate a different business. The market is different. The mentality of the, the, the customer. The technology is different. The technology is <laughs> different. But customers are more educated. You can look anywhere you want on the internet and see what interest rates are. So you know if somebody's a little high or a little bit too low. Yep. They're too high. They're screwing me. They're too low. Something's bound to happen. Yep. Right. Yep. So you, you customers are savvy. So you've got to be there to work with them and, and change your business and evolve with times as, as they, as they move on. Sure. And I think, so a lot of these, uh, moving company owners, so, and I don't know it necessarily in your industry, I assume it's pretty similar, but during the, uh, COVID era, which we all were scared in the very beginning. Obviously, terrible things did happen from COVID, but of course. COVID, COVID first started. The I first made more money than I months. ever made during COVID. Well, and that's the big thing. <laughs> Movers did too. You know, the first month or so of it, when they were trying to shut us down and all that stuff, everyone's a little yep. scared. But then everyone was moving Absolutely. because interest rates dropped. They were at a good rate. Um, people were able to work remotely. So they were moving from where they lived at. Everyone was moving from California. Good yes, thing, right? <laughs> thank you. Great place to get out of. You know, and so all these things happened, but a lot of movers actually opened during that time. Right. And so they came into the moving industry. Oh, this is how it's going to be? Oh, this is amazing. This is so easy. The phone just rings. And so they went out and bought new trucks, bought buildings or leased and stuff. And then obviously, you know, that was the peak time and, sure. and for you guys as well. Um, that now they're going, holy shit, how do I keep the lights on? You know, you know it's, it's a delicate down. balance running a business. You certainly never want to be understaffed and not have the equipment to do what you need to do. Sure. But on the other hand, you don't want to have more expenses and you have to realize you, you can, you should build a business relatively slowly. Yep. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go at snail's pace, sure. but you have to be able to analyze, is this a pattern or is it a fleeting thing yeah. that's happening? And in every business, we're going to see cycles. Yep. There, there, there's going to be yep. cycles. And right now, I think most businesses, unless you're an attorney or in healthcare or work for the government, you're probably not making as much money as sure. you used to make. Yeah. Just because of inflation, because of the economy. 100%. But that will change. That will It won't go on forever. How long it will go on, none of us really know. But- I think that that will change and things will be better. But when it changes, your life is going to be hectic again and you're going to be making money, but your business may not be dialed in the way that you wanted it, want it to be. Take the time now to analyze what you're doing, what your systems look like, come up with a great business plan and start implementing systems now while you can. It will pay dividends in the future. Here's a word from one of our sponsors. Are you a moving company struggling to keep up with customer calls? Let Lion's Den Booking Service handle your overflow, after hours calls, or even the entirety of your sales. As a call center booking service, we're dedicated to helping your business thrive. With years of experience and a commitment to customer satisfaction, we'll make sure your clients receive the best possible service. Trust us to take your business to the next level. Contact Lion's Den Booking Service today www.lionsdensales.com. And so what are you doing? So how have you cycled through that? Obviously you, you run a brokerage, you have I employees. Do. What is that? So 2000, cause it's very similar to moving industry, right? So 2000, uh, 21, whatever, when it's the peak, you're obviously hiring a bunch of people. You have a, a bigger team. You're trying to handle all the Mortgages coming in. Yep. So our business dropped. Our business dropped considerably in the mortgage industry uh, in March of 2022. Uh, realtors didn't get hit as hard for as long, uh, but the mortgage industry did because the refinances cut off yep. and then people weren't buying as much. A lot of people paid cash after that. So 
there we did have to make some layoffs. Sure. So there were people that we had to cut. One of the mistakes I made during the recession is I didn't cut fast enough. Yep. I kept thinking it'll hold on. I I got good people. I don't want to let them go. Yeah. You know what? If you're in business, hire slow and fire fast. Yep. Even if it it's hurt. And I'm telling you, letting people go that are oh, good people is part of the most painful things. You lose sleep over it. It's difficult. But if you don't do it, you kill the mothership. Yep. And you can't kill the mothership. You yep. have to keep revenue coming in. So I had to do some layoffs. We cut back on some some marketing things that we were doing that were, you know, the were, ROI maybe wasn't. Yeah, the ROI wasn't as much, but, uh, but you couldn't, I, I, like I kept my radio shows, my yep. radio shows produced tons of business for me. Sure. Um, I, 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 I spent more time in the field visiting builders and visiting real estate agents and having face-to-face -face meeting with business owners and helping them, but you can't stop. You have to keep going, but you have to know what you can cut. But if you don't cut expenses during slow times, you will put yourself into bankruptcy. Yeah. And that's what we saw. And I we've definitely seen some moving companies already go out of business with this one, which is sure. which is hard to see. And some of them are big. I mean, some of them are decent sized companies. But during the 2008, I really remember um, these companies. So like obviously 05, 06 was booming. Right? Sure. Um, and they went out and bought all brand new trucks, brand new office buildings, brand new storage facilities, which they were able to cash flow. You know, sure. the money was Absolutely. coming in. Just and paying payments on and it, them. And it ate them up. We probably saw, so for our moving company, J&J &J Metro in 2008. So we, to kind of go back, my dad always, which we owned our building. Yes. Um, you had your own moving company. Had our own moving company, had our own storage and stuff. But my dad was smart in the sense of during that time, we had no debt for the company. The mortgage was paid right. off and not necessarily that I preach that because obviously I, I there's a, definitely times of getting mortgages and, and investing and, and spending that money, but it really saved us during that time I agree. because um, when all the other moving companies couldn't afford their own rent, couldn't afford their trucks, couldn't afford all that stuff, we ate them all up. So coming from a guy that's in the business of loaning money, I'm going to tell you that debt is the enemy of wealth. So the only debt that I generally incur are appreciating assets. So sure. I will leverage real estate because I, I'm it's growing for me. Yep. But even my vehicles, I mean, I pay cash for my yep. vehicles. I have never owned a new vehicle in my entire life sure. until I bought one. My wife never spends money. She's <laughs> the best wife ever. So I went out and bought her a brand new vehicle. It's the first vehicle I've ever bought and I've never owned one. So I buy used vehicles, used boats, used everything yeah. because I'm waiting for that depreciation to, to come down, but I pay cash for them yep. and it's gotten me through some tough times. What you have to do is you need, and my dad told me he was a builder and he said, Bruce, son, if you get into this industry, you're going to be rich one day and you're going to be looking for a ham sandwich the next day. So when you're rich, yeah. you store money away, you squirrel it away. You live under your means, yep. live under your means because we don't know what tomorrow brings. But here's the thing. Who makes the most money is the people that were able to ride it out and yep. it's the upswing when your profits are the strongest. Yep. So you have to be able to sustain yourself, but that doesn't mean you spend money frivolously sure. and it does mean you have to cut corners, but you got to maintain. And we usually think of a six month cushion. Yep. Well, six month cushion wouldn't have done it for us this no. time, would it? Nope. If you didn't have a three year cushion, you're yep. in trouble. Yep. Right. And who who can afford to have a three year cushion? Sure. So that's tough to do. But if you are if you're making money, think of yourself as not making the money. Store that money away. Invest it wisely, and it will be there in a rainy day. And then your profits will soar during the upswings. Yeah. Well, that's even the, the thing that's going on right now is a lot of these moving companies are struggling. And if these people uh, have cash set aside from when things were really good, they're really able to- Well, you think to, about to it, 30% of the people in the moving industry or more or real estate industry sure. or, or mortgage industry get out because times are tough and it will be at least 30%. It oh, could yeah. be as much as 60%. But what happens to the 40% that's left? Yep. 
And that's what I'm saying. They yeah. will reap the profits because yeah. then, then the people that got out of the business went bankrupt. They're trying to get back in. They can't get bank loans anymore. Yeah. Yep. Right. So the people that are able to, to stay in there will make the most money. Yeah. And it's, it's a interesting thing. I remember seeing, uh, from a long time ago, if the data in a different, but, uh, from the stock market, the people during 2008 that bailed in the stock market, right? Because they had whatever it was, if you had 10,000, hundred thousand, a hundred million, didn't matter. You literally watched it go down by 60%, 70%, whatever it was. Um, and so they, and go, they got I'm scared. Gonna take everything out. I'm of the so stock scared. Market. I'm going to pull it all out. And the reality is, the moment they pulled it out is when they lost it all. Everything. Because if they had left it in there over the next five, six years, it doubled, tripled. What and, do you think you know, Warren Buffett did? Exactly. He invested more. Yeah. So he's looking at this. So listen, and 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 I akin this to the same thing. It, it's a little different environment because interest rates were lower after the recession, sure. um, and housing prices fell. Yep. Okay, so that is a difference. However, the similarity is it is a down market. Yep. And down markets are opportunities. And that's why 30% of people buying homes in this market are investors. They're not first-time yep. home buyers. They're not move-up buyers. They're not downsize buyers. 30% are investors that see the future. They're, yep. They don't care. They don't even care if they're making positive cash flow today because they see the appreciation Correct. factor that's around the corner. So the same thing is now people are not buying. And I'll give you an example. You got 10 people that want to buy, yep. but only two people are willing to jump in the market and suck up the crappy interest rates and the yep. higher insurance. Okay. Interest rates drop. Yep. All 10 drop, jump in the market. Housing prices skyrockets. Yep. You're into bidding wars again. Yep. It, it's And I the, think that's, I would bet money that's what's going to happen. It's going it's, to happen. It's right 100%. now, you got sellers will do your, fix your house. They'll make repairs. They'll pay closing costs. They're doing buy downs Buy down for on you. your points, yep. They're buy down. I mean, there's so many opportunities, but people are letting the interest rate get in front of the rate of return. Yep. Yep. And I think it's a big mistake that people are making right now. Now is a major opportunity. You might not have this opportunity right after the election. If interest yeah. rates drop, you're toast and you think you're going to be better off, but you won't be better yeah. off because now it's going to be tough to even yeah. get the you're house. You're going to pay 10, 15, 20% more on a house. And a first time home buyer can't pay any more than Correct. what the value is. They can't overpay yep. on a house. They're done. The first time home buyer is always the one that gets screwed the most, but they're the worst enemy of themselves too. Yep. Absolutely. So, I mean, we we have that. Then, you know, you were asking me about self-employed people. Yep. So Let's you had some that. questions about that. Yeah. So obviously, you know, uh, majority of our listeners are going to be self-employed. They're business owners. They might have five employees, might have a hundred employees, whatever right. it is. But, you know, traditionally it's always been hard for self-employed people, not all, some mm -hmm. self-employed people to get financing because obviously sometimes they make more than they might claim claim on their tax return. Right. So what is, you know, obviously there's things back in the 08 era, there was, everyone was doing stated income loans, which was a big part anymore. of the, of the problem back at that time. Yep. If you had good credit and most of you probably already know, if you have a good credit score back then, you pretty much could go in there and say you Fog made 600, 600 grand a year. And they say, okay, 600 grand, yep. yep, sign. And that's what your stated income was. Yep. Um, those are gone, which is a They're good gone. thing. It was a great thing. Um, but now what are options for, for business So owners? it's interesting because, you know, as soon as I get a phone call, Jason, from <laughs> somebody and they say, you know, I got good credit, I got money in the bank, but I also have a creative accountant. Okay. I already know. I'm <laughs> you reading, know what that means. I'm reading your tea leaves, baby. <laughs> so you're not showing any money on your tax returns. Well, banks and traditional mortgages, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, HUD, VA, you got to report your income on your tax returns or you don't get a loan. Yep. Okay. Period. Yep. But we have alternative programs that are still verifying income. So I have bank statement programs. So I can either use 12 or 24 months worth of the business bank statement. Business bank statement. Business bank statements. Yeah. Now, if you're a sole proprietor and you don't use a business sure. bank statement, there's alternatives. But business bank statement, I will add up all your deposits over the last 12 months. Yep. I'll use 50% of those deposits as income. So if you- That's yeah, significant. Yeah. If your business generates you know, a revenue of 50 grand a month, I don't care if your expenses are 60 grand a month. Yep. 
50 grand a month your income consistently i'm going to use 25 grand a yep. month for income yep. so that's one program and then we have our 1099 program so 1099 people um we're always in the same category. They had to have two years tax yep. returns, self-employed, treated just like self-employed. We came up with a, a program at Cross Country Mortgage. Um, by the way, we're number one in the country right now. Cross Country Mortgage, number one largest retail it, lender. What, what kind of what kind of amount of money and loans are you guys doing a month now? Billions. Yeah. Billions. Yep. So uh just big, a few. <laughs> big com big company, but we operate all independently. So I run Central Florida branch. Sure. And we I run my company like a mom and pop shop. Yep. I honestly do. It's it you get personalized service. So, but I want to get back on track for 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 self employed ten ninety nines. I'll use your ten ninety nine. I'll give you ninety percent of the income on. Wow, ninety percent. I don't yep. know any company that'll do that. And then for investors, this is only for investment properties, non-owner occupied. Uh, we have what's called a DSCR, debt service coverage ratio loan, where the only income I need is the rental income on the subject property that you're buying or refinancing. Okay. So as long as it's a one-to-one -one ratio, yep. you're good to go. Now, you got to have decent credit. Sure. You're not getting a loan with crappy credit on yep. that. And if you're buying it, you got to have at least 20% to put down. Yep. But those programs are available for self-employed people or don't people that just don't show the income on their so, tax returns. So on a property like that. So literally you're saying if the mortgage is three grand a month, we just need to show that the you property can, is going to bring three grand a month. That's it. Well, that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, the, the, the concern that people have is, oh yeah. But I'm going to pay a higher rate of interest for that type of loan and have to put more money down. Yeah. So I did the math for you. Yeah, let's okay? hear it. Okay. So let's just say that you make 500 grand a year. Sure. And you only report 100. Now, most of you that make 500 grand a year, you're only reporting 35 grand. <laughs> you might even re be reporting a loss. Personally, I'm not the IRS. I could give a darn what you do. I'm here to help you get from point A to point B. So you make 500, but you only report a hundred. Yep. So you avoided paying taxes on $400,000. Yeah. Now, if your tax bracket is 20%, which would be about average. Yep. Okay. You avoided paying taxes of $80,000. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. Okay. Now, but you come to me for a loan. What's the conventional loan going for? Let's say it's 7%. Sure. What's the non-conventional loan for the bank statement program? Let's say it's eight to eight and a half percent. That's yep. about right. It could be seven and three quarters, but let's go to the high side and say it's eight and a half percent. Yep. So that's a point and a half higher than today's rate. Yep. If you bought a $500,000 house, your difference in the interest that you're going to pay me at the end of the year is $7,500. Yeah. So you paid $7,500 more in interest, but you saved $80,000 in taxes. Come on. Yeah. That's a no brainer for me. Well, and traditionally the house value has gone up. And the house value is <laughs> so, so that pulls up some of it too, because you may not even be able to get the financing if you did it traditional. Absolutely. But doing it this way, it gives you the option to be able to get into the market and, you know, get on the I believe swing. that the more homes that you own, the better off you're going to be in your retirement. I have multiple properties. I don't think I have in, as many doors as you do. I think I've got nine right now. Sure. But um, I, and all mine go into a trust. I yep. created a program called a leapfrog program. You can go to my website at webringyouhome.com, register for one of my events, but I teach a class on how I developed real estate. So growing up, uh, once I got my act together and started yep. in business, sure. I still didn't have a lot of money to buy investment property. So yep. I bought my first house, FHA. Yep. I put three and a half percent down. The house was 107 grand. I ended up keeping it as a rental property. Yeah, and buying it for a little bit. Yep. I did this repetitively. Sure. So I always bought as a primary. Yep. Now this is great for you if you don't have a lot of capital. So I buy as a primary, put minimum down, live in there for a year, do it again, do it again, do it again. And every time your interest rate's a little better too. It's it? a better interest better rate. Better interest rate. And, and some people go, well, I'm paying PMI. So what? Once you've got the equity, yeah, it will drop the PMI. Then then drops, forget, yeah. forget about it. Don't worry about it. Leverage. Listen, your, your rate of return on a real estate investment is far greater with less money down than it is with more money down. Yep. So 
leverage a, an appreciating asset. So I did this and I teach people how to do it. If you're in your 20s and you're listening, or if you have employees or children or grandchildren in your 20s, get them into home ownership. You have a 70% greater chance on retiring as a millionaire if you start buying real estate in your 20s. Listen, if I had it to do over, I would have, I'd own 100 properties yep. right now. Yep. And you think about that. The way in my program that I do, every house is paid off within 20 years. Matter of fact, I'll show you how to acquire five properties and all five will be paid off in a 20 year period of time. Now you think about that. You got four rental properties yep. 20 years from now. They rent today for 2,300 in, in 20 years from now, 2,300 will be eight grand all day long. Yep. Yep. It'll be eight grand all day long, yep. whether you like it or not. Yep. Okay. So maybe 7,500. Yeah. Multiply that times five. Yep. That's and they're paid your, off. <laughs> that And they're all free and clear. Yep. All you're paying is your taxes and your insurance. You have a lifelong generational income coming in. So all my properties will go into trust for my two kids. Yep. They will have access to that trust after they do one thing. What's that? They have to contribute five properties to the trust. <laughs> Good. So that keeps them honest. They're not going to use daddy's hard earned how, money. How old are your kids? I've got 121 and 126. Okay. So they're going on the same day. Yep. Really? Five years apart. Huh. Yeah. So Chase and Paige, great kids. Paige has got one more year of college. Chase is already out in the, in the world working. That's good. But he, he bought his house at 23. Yep. He's 26. Three years later, it's worth 175 grand more. Yeah. Now here's a 26 year old. He makes 50 grand a year in income, yep. and he has 175 thousand dollars sitting equity. in an equity bank. That's how you make money. Yeah. yeah. The 70 percent of wealth in the United States is estate. built in real estate. Yep. Don't don't miss out on that boat. If you're renting right now, you're a tenant on the planet. You're not getting anywhere. And don't complain about a seven and a quarter percent interest rate when you're paying a hundred percent interest rate on rent. Correct. It's not getting you anywhere. We have to help more people become homeowners. Become homeowners. It really is the American yeah. dream. Yep. Yeah. And I and I think that is the big thing is that so many people, and I hear it all the time. Is that I'm just going to wait till the interest rates drop. I'm just going to wait. Well, actually, if we go back, or the during the COVID price to drop during COVID, it was oh the prices is too much, two point nine percent interest, right? Yeah, the prices are too much. I'm waiting for the market to drop, and I'm going. It's not going to drop during that time. I picked up a bunch of properties, and then obviously prices have continued to climb, and now the interest rates are so much more. I, I picked up one home. It's a triplex. Paid three forty for it. My mortgage is sixteen hundred a month. Incredible. And with that triplex, I don't know, it cash flowed five six thousand. Now you got that when you when your interest rates were two and two point two point nine. Yeah. Two, okay. Paid two point nine. But again, still like sometimes that was we get lucky. lucky. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, sometimes we. But get even lucky. that though, people during that time, and it's funny. Even when I bought that three forty, I'm like, man, it might come down. I don't know. I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah. But. The whole point is you got to stop being scared. So many people are scared of what's going to happen. And, you know, the reality is history does repeat itself. And if you look at the history of the stock market, right, it's always gone up. It's always gone up. It's the fact. It's what it Even is. Even if it goes down, it's going to go it's up. It always goes up. If you look at the housing market, it's, it's always go. gone up. It's never. In, 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 in From the beginning of time. Yep. We're never going to see a $10,000 three bedroom house again no. that we saw, right? No. 50 years ago. Like it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. happen. Um, and that's the big thing that people are so scared of. And it's just, you got to look at the statistics, the data, the history. It is impossible for it to continue to go down. Talking about this, even when you look at, and I bought a home in 2006, that dropped in half of its oh, worth yeah. in 2008. Now, here's the thing. I got rid of that house. Had I kept that house, it's now worth that's more like than I paid for. selling all your stocks exactly. when the market crashes. And that's the whole thing that, and I was dumb during that time. I did but, the same thing. You know, the thing being is that had I held on to it, it came you back imagine what over it a couple would be years. worth now? Yeah, over a couple of years. You know, yeah. I think it was five, six years. Five, six it years. Back it, to where it, it was. was normal. And then, it, and then it's obviously gone since. So my know. two biggest mistakes financially in life I didn't buy enough properties after the recession. Yep. I would have made a fortune. I probably could have retired very comfortably right now if I <laughs> would have just not been fearful. So you're talking about fear. Yep. Fear is killing you. It's literally yep. destroying you. I was fearful. Yep. You might've had a bigger boat. 
I probably would have had a bigger boat. <laughs> you have a big enough boat. He's got a bigger boat, okay? <laughs> He's got the bigger boat. So I probably would have had a bigger boat. <laughs> but I made the mistake and I was in fear. Yep. Today is not that much different. Sure. I know the interest rates are different. I know housing prices aren't dropping. Yeah. But it's still a down market. And people are fearful to get in. The people that are buying right now will make huge profits. Yeah. You wait five, 10 years, you, you're, you know, housing prices double every 10 years. Yep. They yep. double every 10 years. Now that was accelerated during COVID sure. because they, yeah, went, they up. went up 50% in three years. Yep. Right. So that's yep. very unusual, but then they flattened. But a lot of that too was fueled with low interest rates. Of course it was. So again, and people working in their pajamas. Correct. But again, we're talking about interest rates dropping is what we need. Right. But when that happens again, it's going to be the same. Your, your housing prices Correct. are going to go up. Yep. So you will see interest rates drop. Don't wait for interest rates to drop. Buy now, refi later. Marry the house, date the rate. So stop worrying about what interest rates are and start worrying about how to make money in real estate. You will make money, but your value is going to skyrocket when interest rates drop, it'll be huge. Yep. So I am not selling anything right now. Yep. Uh, I made, I have to confess, I made one more big mistake. So I had made a bunch of money on profit, uh, in profits on some rental properties that we had. And I sold five of them in 2018. Now, do you imagine if, if I wouldn't have them. sold that? So my two biggest mistakes is yep. not buying enough and selling too many. Yeah, yeah. Just hang on to them. Hang on to them. You don't need to be a flipper. Yeah. And if you are, I have avenues for you too, but flippers generally don't make money unless you're a professional flipper and you have crews to do it. There's a lot more risk. Yeah. And I, I think that's the big thing. And the way that I look at it now when I purchase something is here's the deal. Is, is it likely that homes are going to continue to go up, which is yes. Yes. Is it likely the interest rates are going to come down at some point, which is then going to drive them higher, which yes. is yes. And my big thing is that worst case scenario, this is worst case, I buy a home and it drops a little bit of value because if some people are saying, right, they don't think it's going to increase at this up, say they're right. Even if they're right, it's going to be for a year or two. Yeah, it won't worst be case. Long. But, but again, I don't think that's going to happen. But worst case, same thing that happened during 2008, the home I bought, I think I paid 279 for it, went to refinance it, it's worth hundred and it was worth like, yeah, it was like 180 or something. I go, you got to be, and this was after I put like 30 grand into right. it doing stuff. But again, that was worst case scenario for me, but I accepted it and, and got out from underneath that house. And had I stayed with it, it would have been fine. Yeah. Um, it would have been better. You would have been, yep. you would have gained huge, yep. but you know what? I see people doing that all the time. It's very, it's very challenging. Sure. I understand. Listen, I don't dismiss the fact that fear is, is there. Yeah. But if you want anything in life, it's going to take risk. It took risk. He did. He just got married recently. He's got a beautiful wife. He got a beautiful baby at home. Okay. It was risky for you to even ask her out on a date. Sure. It was risky for you to ask her to marry you. It's risky to bring a child into the world. Yep. It's risky to do everything that we do in life. So shake it off, yeah. put your big boy pants on and let's make stop some being a victim and do stop it. Stop being a victim. Don't be a victim. Yep. I, that is, that is something that just literally makes me sick when I see people in a victim mentality, but, and, and it's, it's destroying you is what it's destroying. Yep. Yep. So, so one other thing about, uh, values, and this kind of goes back to the moving industry. So, um, I was a, a infant, but my dad had bought our property, uh, mm -hmm. which over off Kennedy Boulevard in mm -hmm. Orlando, where we built a warehouse, mm -hmm. paid a hundred thousand for the property, spent another hundred thousand on building a 8,000 square foot building at the mm -hmm. time. So 200 grand all in that property now is worth about three and a half, four million dollars paid off rental income. Le we lease it out. We still have some storage in there. And then so the, even the rest while of it, you were paying it off, you didn't pay it off. Correct. Your tenants paid it correct, off. Correct. Correct. And so that's the big thing that, uh, in, in, in reality, that property now is worth more money than the business that supported it and paid for it to get paid for. 
Um, and that's so many moving companies. They don't do that. They're, they're renting, they're stuck in renter mentality. Um, they lease forever. And I, that was one of the best things that we've done for when you talk about, um, leaving money to your family or leaving a, you know, a, uh, legacy. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a big part that, uh, that we have in our family. And it's yeah. obviously we have a bunch more property since then, but that that's what started it all, which is interesting. Well, you know, it's nice to be able to leave our kids a legacy. Now they don't know this, so I'm hoping they're not going to watch this podcast, <laughs> but because I tell them mom and dad are spending all the money, they're not going <laughs> to get anything. But in reality, I want to leave a legacy to my children and to my grandchildren. And, um, I've been fortunate enough to have a great business and have a great life and have a, a great wife and children. And, um, but those things take work. Even a marriage, it takes work. If you want anything in life, it's going to take work and it takes risks. So, um, I mean, you, you just, you just got to jump in there and, and do it, Jason. And yeah. you and I have made tons of mistakes. We said earlier, <laughs> I'm an expert at making mistakes, yeah. but I don't blame others for my mistakes. And when I see people with that victim mm. mentality, they're like, oh, that's because I got sick. It's because I broke my leg. It's because my wife left me. It's because yeah. whatever. Yep. Big deal. Yep. It's take it upon. What could I have done better to have saved my marriage? What could I have done better to not break my leg? I shouldn't have been jumping out of an airplane. Probably maybe that. Did well, and it, I think, right? I think a big point to that is interesting about your story that I didn't know before you're a high school dropout and you got yep. a yacht and you yep. got rental homes and you got a business and a legacy and a family. And I think that is uh, a testament to that because, you know, as an adult, person now you could say oh you know i was wrong when i was a kid and dropped out because of that my whole life screwed up and i never did anything and but that's not the case you know and i think that's a big part of the mentality the mindset the attitude that it took me a long time to come out and share that with people i yeah. was really embarrassed about it i didn't want people to know i thought they would judge me uh, why would somebody borrow a million dollars from my mortgage company knowing that I'm a high school dropout? Now I yeah. teach financial classes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So listen, I'm not a graduate. I do have a PhD. Did I sure. tell you that? Uh -uh. I have a public high school diploma equivalency. Yep. So I did get my GED, my That's PhD. Good. So uh, but it doesn't even matter. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter. It like doesn't matter. You know. My customers don't care. I came out. I I confessed on the radio. My wife's like, "What are you doing? People don't need <laughs> to know that about you." I'm like, "Yes, they do. I promise. I'm going to." You know, people would say, "Be genuine," and I'm like, "Well, how do you do that? Does everybody be genuine? Is everybody really honest? I'll be vulnerable. And, and so and be vulnerable. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm vulnerable. I make mistakes." I've made a lot of mistakes. I still make mistakes, yep. uh, but I'm not afraid to take risk. I don't blame other people for my problems. I take it upon myself. I reanalyze, I reposition, and I go for it again. And that's what you got to do. It doesn't matter what your education is. It matters what your efforts are. So make a lot of effort. Here's a word from one of our sponsors. Feeling overwhelmed by the chaos of running your moving company? Managing contracts, juggling quotes, and keeping tabs on your movers. But what if we told you there's a game changer? Meet Move It Pro, your moving company's secret weapon. Move It Pro streamlines contract management, simplifies quoting, and offers live tracking. Say farewell to the headaches of running a moving company and embrace your path to success. Don't let paperwork hinder your progress. Experience Move It Pro and watch your business soar. Move It Pro, the number one CRM for moving business. Try our free demo today. So your rental properties, talk to me a little bit about those and how you, how you, how, I guess, how do you even get started in the mortgage industry? Like where so did I, that come I, from? The, the mortgage industry, I got started in, um, uh, 1988, I worked as an assistant I was for a three, loan officer. I was three years old. You're three, yeah. <laughs> so 1988, I got started. Um, uh, I drove an old truck. You could see the highway going underneath your feet as you're <laughs> driving my truck, right? Yep. And the guy goes, you can't take customers in this truck. And I'm like, why? It's a great truck. He says, nobody's going to get in this truck. You're going to fall through. <laughs> Anyways, I was this guy's assistant, and I never thought, I thought, oh, mortgage industry, how boring would that be? And then as I got into it, 
I loved it. It's a sales job. Yep. I was helping people accomplish something. I was giving money away. I felt like I had a sales product that was something people really wanted. Yeah. Um, so, and then um, I bought my first home. Uh, I, I realized what a great investment it was. It was on an option arm, a yep. monthly adjustable option monthly? arm. Monthly adjustable option arm. Ended up being a great loan. You can't even get them anymore. But I, I got this house. I decided I wanted to do it again. And I just started repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. And that's how most of my properties are residential. I had a couple of short-term rentals. I just turned them into long-term rentals. Uh, two of them, are, I left them furnished. So Airbnb. You were they, I was doing it, but but I got in trouble with Daytona, city of Daytona, oh, because yeah. you're not supposed to rent there. So I got brought in front of the judge. You're Here, kidding. I'm telling you, I make mistakes, okay? So listen. I did know you're not allowed to do them there because I looked into buying some rental properties over there to do so Airbnb. I had two properties. <laughs> Both of them I was, I was VRBOing and... I ended up renting one of them on a long-term rent and they still pop me on it because they, they, they find me because I was, um, you're not allowed to even advertise it. And that's a, a code in Daytona. So I was advertising it. The judge fined me $750 for that. So then I'm like, oh my God, I got this other rental did they property do, they over there. They did probably pretty good, didn't they? When they, they were running. what? They probably did really good on, on Airbnb. Oh yeah, when they did great. Because there's no other one. <laughs> they did great. There, there is some they on there. They did great. But I'll tell you what, you don't like, listen, I don't advise you getting in front of a judge or a magistrate, okay? So then I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I got bookings for this other one already. <laughs> so I took it off Airbnb but I kept the bookings and the, there's one guy that goes around and checks the internet for all these rental properties in Daytona. And oh he's quite gosh. a jerk. He really was a jerk, but anyway, he was doing his job. We hope you're listening to this. So I hope Sorry. he is. So yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Inspector Yates. Thank you very much. <laughs> Blah. So, so at any rate, he, I have this other property, but I took it off VRBO. I did everything they told. I didn't know that after three months, it automatically popped back up. <laughs> so he pulls it up and he brings me into court again in front of the judge. So the judge is like, I can find you $15,000 for oh, that. Geez. 15 grand is the, is the, is the maximum fine. So I told the judge, I said, it's not on VRBO. And he pulls it up. He, and the guy, the Yates pulls up, he goes, well, how come somebody did a review on your house in August? If you're telling me you took it off the market in March, I'm like, I don't know what August was that? I have What's no been idea. August before. So the judge is like, I'll tell you what, a thousand dollar fine. And I'm like, judge, you have nothing to find me on. I did not break the rules on yeah. this. And so I said, how about I pay the court $300? And the judge looks at me, says, are you negotiating with me? I said, I'm absolutely negotiating with you because I think it's a frivolous fine. So he says, how about $500? And I said, done deal. We're out of here. Yeah. So That is really funny because I 100% was looking at doing rentals. There is a couple triplexes in Daytona that I was looking at and I was going to do them. Beachside, you can do it. Mainland, you can't. Yeah, it was mainland, but it was walking distance to the beach is what I was looking at. But they don't but care. Everything I was looking at, yeah, everything I was looking at was that the city of Daytona is super because obviously I used to be there a lot too. Yeah, that's where our boat is. Um, all right, so okay, so as time went on, so you got those, and then so you did some other home. You they're all here in Orlando. Yeah, and I've now. got some commercial property, and I own a, I own an office building as well. I occupy uh, part of my office right. building, that's so that's worked out. Um, really well it's at the corner of i4 and fairbanks i think that's pretty that's pretty a very valuable piece of property yep. yeah I, I think i bought that property in 1998 yeah, i think i paid 330,000 oh for it so how yeah how many square feet do you have about 4300 so yeah right yeah. at the that's corner a, that's of a few, i4 several fairbanks several million dollar yeah piece of property so it's, yeah it was a it was a good investment where was that near uh where skycraft used to be uh probably huh uh, not far, the other side of I four. Yeah. Skycraft, I, I yeah. or uh, Skycraft used to be where uh, 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 the the old car lot used to be uh, in North Northam's Porsche dealership okay. is I know, I in that Porsche. area. Yeah. Right, that's good. That's a very good area. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. So that's neat. So as as time's gone on, obviously you've you've used your own products for for mortgages you're doing and stuff like that. So if someone wants to get into starting getting investment properties, mm -hmm. what is, 
what does that look like as far as, you know, they're applying with you and going through that stuff and figuring out which, which mortgage works best. How, how long has the new ones been out that you were saying, or I don't know if it's new, the, the new. for investment, for investment loans. You mean loans for bank statement programs? Uh, not bank, the, the investment D one. D the DSCR? Yeah. What the DSCR, the debt service cover ratio loans been around for, I don't know, probably five years or so, okay. but it's really gotten more popular. Uh, because it allows people to buy investment properties without having to verify their income. They just got, have to have the credit, the down payment and the rental, uh, the rental income on the property. And, they, so, and obviously it's not rented yet. So they still got to get it rented and everything, but they're, they take an estimate of what well, it would be or I'll, how do you do it? What we do is the appraiser goes out and, uh, the appraiser does, a uh, um, a rent, a rent verification. So they determine what the rent would go, would for, go for in that area for that home. And that's the rent that's used. You could, if you had an active lease, you could use it, yep. but they don't like using leases because people can inflate a Fabricate lease. Fabricate it. Right. Sure. Yeah. I'm getting five grand a month. <laughs> I don't think so. Right. Yeah. That's a so, one bedroom. No. <laughs> right. I don't think so. It's not New York city, yep. but, but those programs are available. Listen, here's what I suggest you do. First of all, if you don't own a home, then buy one as a primary. Yep. You got to have a place to live and you might as well build equity. Then if you want to, uh, if you want to subscribe to my leapfrog program, I will teach you how to buy homes with minimum down, keep them and rent them. The problem that most people have with that is somebody in the family becomes emotionally attached to the neighborhood of their home. Yep. And then they don't want to continue on with the program. So don't become emotionally attached to your own five homes. Okay. Yeah. That's my advice. <laughs> if you already own a home and you don't want to move, then we have investor transactions, full doc Fannie Mae transactions, um, for 20% down, 20% down, you buy yourself an investment property. Yep. If you don't show the income on your tax returns and you're self-employed, you can do a bank statement program or you can do a DSCR, Got either it. one. You do commercial lending also? Or I don't do a consumer? lot of commercial. I can, I, you know, I try to stick with things that I'm really good at. Yep. So <laughs> I'm really good at residential lending. Yep. I know it. I live it. I do it. So um, I can share people with people experiences, um, talk them off the shelf for things they probably will get wrong. Sure. Um, what type of properties to invest in, which ones not to invest in. But when it comes to commercial, it's, it's, it's whole animal. Yeah. And, uh, I'm too old to segue into new things. I'm yep. trying to, my Ram is full and I'm trying not <laughs> to stuff it full of anything new. Yep. Yep. So if, if someone wanted to purchase a commercial property as investment, mm -hmm. that would be, I think that's a great they, investment. Yeah. So I can do a DSCR. I can do a bank those, statement. I absolutely it. can. I absolutely can do those. Uh, but I don't do, like, I typically won't do your traditional, you know, uh, uh, business plaza or office gotcha. building. It's just Too not, complex. I have, I have friends in the business that are better than I am at that. When it comes to residential, I got you on that one. Yep. When it comes to commercial, I, I probably will refer you to somebody else unless you need some type of an alternative doc program because you're creative accountant. <laughs> no one has creative accountants, right? So let's talk a little bit about boating. You so obviously, yeah, boating? let's talk I about love boating. boating. My favorite so, so subject. How long, so obviously when I bought mine uh, and came to our marina where <laughs> yep. Caribbean Jacks is, yep. you were already there. Yes. And I think, I don't remember exactly, but I think either I, I apologized to most people on the dock when we first got there because so our motor yacht's name is Naughty. Yes. So we're sometimes rowdy. Yeah. Um, but then I think you were probably the rowdy one on the dock. You're on the opposite dock. It must me. be my neighbor. <laughs> it's got to be Alan. It's like I just, Alan. I just remember uh, I was there for Fourth of July and I was pretty bummed out that I wouldn't be able to see fireworks, but we could see them beachside. Yeah. And somehow fireworks went off. I don't was, know how that there was happened. Fireworks. You're not, it it's illegal like to your set boat. fireworks off on a marina dock. You know that, right? Yeah. It must've been the neighbors. It had to be, it had to be Coquina. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but uh -oh. we do have a lot of fun over there. You know, it's a great marina. Uh, we have our own private pool and captain's lounge and yep. a great restaurant and good neighbors. Um, uh, I remember the first time I think I walked over to your boat because 
I saw people working on it all the Fair time. Yeah. And he took this boat and retrofitted. And there's a story we should tell on another episode yeah. about how you found that boat. Yeah. Because that was a miracle find. Yeah. Right. Sometimes we get lucky. Yeah. And 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 we and that's risk. You took a massive risk in buying that boat. Yeah. Because there were no papers, remember? Yep. yep. And you bought it from like a, one of the had a title. Uh, had Just a no, title. no, no repair paperwork. That there's no. That we thought, but when you're buying a boat, you need engine history. Yeah, you yeah. need to know everything that's gone. It's on a big with boat. It. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah, it's not just a yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not a. It's not a bow rider. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's a long story. But to make it short, essentially, I bought it from a charity. Uh, the boat was given to them because um, a gentleman owned it. Um, bought it brand new. Um, up in Burlington, yep, Vermont, Vermont, where he's from. And owned he, grocery stores. He owned a ton of shopping plazas. Yep. Um, Anthony Pomerleau is his name. You can look him up. Pretty interesting guy. Very big uh, philanthropist. Mm-hmm. Um, the He ran against Bernie Sanders. Did he really? Um, I didn't there. know that. Lost. But um, he ended up, uh, the police department needed a new police department there. Their building was run down. Mm-hmm. They had no funds. Bernie was whatever position he was there. And so Anthony, uh, the guy that owned my boat, Mm -hmm. um, purchased a couple million dollar building, retrofitted it to be a police department, and then donated it to the police department for $1,000. Oh my Or gave it to them, said, I want $1,000. So that we do the paperwork. And um, so in Burlington, Vermont, the police department, there's the Anthony Parmerlow Police Department in in the city. How about that? So anyway, he bought my boat. Uh, and I've talked to his children, which now run his estate. Uh, I don't, and didn't care one bit about boating. Yeah, didn't care about boating. And I don't know, his estate's probably 250, 300 million, something, mm-hmm. something in that range. Um, and so uh, he said he remembers when his dad came to him and he said, I'm going to buy a boat. And his son goes, well, what kind of boat? He goes, I don't know, but it's going to be a big one. <laughs> it's an old guy. And so, uh, so he bought uh, our boat brand new, uh, ran that boat for 20 years, had a captain full time. Uh, it was a summer office. We had a fax machine on the yacht mm-hmm. when I bought it. And an elevator. At and one an point. elevator. Yep. And, um, and he had his captain bring it to Florida every year. Um, and then he'd fly in and he'd stay on it for six months. Um, but anyways, the point being is it was, uh, he stroked a check for anything that needed done. I mean, it just, he took care of the boat. Mm-hmm. It was his boat. And um, when they donated it to the charity, um, he had already passed away, obviously, and the charity got it. But um, it was donated to Shake a Leg Foundation in Miami. Uh, one of his daughters um, had disabilities or something. Anyway, so Shake a Leg Foundation is a charity, and they donated the boat to him, but they didn't know anything about it. They've never seen the boat right. before. Uh, it's just, hey, someone's going to donate this 70-foot yacht. yacht. Um and uh, let's list it for sale. So they list it for sale. And so I ended up putting a bid on it way under what it was asking and negotiated and back and forth and ended up doing pretty good, um, but didn't really know you anything know, about it much about the boat. Uh, electronics were definitely outdated, um, but the, the, the engines, I mean, I don't know if we had to replace our engines, but they're probably... Twenty to fifty thousand dollars a piece if you had oh to replace God, them. Probably more. They're, they're twelve yeah. cylinder, uh, twelve V seventy one. Yeah, yeah, they're big Detroit. It, it'd be a lot. I would say a hundred grand. Yeah, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, I haven't had to replace them, so that's good. Well, you'll, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have diesels. Happen. So anyway, so 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 fast forward. So we're doing the survey. We're doing all the stuff, and I'm accepting based on the price I'm paying that I'm taking a lot of risk. Engine, everything runs, but I don't know if they've been overhauled. I don't know what's been done to the boat. So after they've accepted my negotiated a price, we're there for a survey I, on the on the yacht. We have a, a captain, we have uh, mechanics. mechanics, we have engine mechanics, uh, surveyors, we have all these people there. And I go down, and it's good size. I mean, we got four uh, four suites, four bedrooms, three bathrooms. Uh, in total, we're three stories. So we have the bottom mm-hmm. level, which is bedrooms mm-hmm. and stuff. Middle levels, the salon, mm-hmm. uh, pilot house, uh, kitchen, stuff yep. like that. And then up top is the flybridge. So anyway, I go down the master bedroom and uh, mind you, it had carpet. It was very outdated. Right. This is an older guy. He's sure probably was. in his 80s. So we did a full refit. But anyways, uh, go down there and there's a filing cabinet in the master closet. The master closet's like half the size of the, man, a third of this room. There's a filing cabinet and I pull it open and there's every record for the boat. They didn't see it. And he had uh, rebuilt both engines, redone all the woodwork. Like 
spent he spent more in the last three years than I paid for the entire boat right. at that time, which was still a lot of money, but we paid sure. for the boat. Um, so Andrew, that's how I got into it. Uh, one of my dreams, I've, I've had a couple dreams since I was a kid. One was to own a Rolls Royce ghost. Uh, mm-hmm. I bought that three years ago. Um, I actually just traded it in. Um, I wanted to get a new one. The technology in those is actually very old. Is it? Uh, they're mainly built for older people. Yeah. So, um, so just, uh, just replace that. We got a new, uh, S class Mercedes, which I, I actually, that. I actually enjoy lot. that. Yeah. That's actually, a nice car. I actually enjoy that more than the Rolls Royce, which is funny. And it's a third of the price. Um, another and one people was people don't look at you like you're, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. who is this well, guy? Yeah, yeah. When I had the Rolls, you get, um, you get people that like try and like jump out in front of your car while you're driving and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. So anyways, um, and the other one was to have a boat. And so that was, I had a couple boats before that. This was like the, the big one, you know? Um, so that's kind of how I got into it. Um, and I've done well with that boat. We've taken it to, um, Savannah. We've been to the keys. Uh, Mm -hmm. we've done St. Augustine multiple tons times. of times. Yeah. Um, but with yours, when did you get yours? And I bought mine. I think I've had it almost five years now. Um, Mine is a lot smaller. The name of my boat is Lil Yachty, okay? So um, yours is still a pretty big boat. My, mine Come on is, now. Mine is just a little bit bigger than half the size is. I think mine is about 48 feet. How so many bedrooms? What do you it's have? It's got it's got two full state rooms and a berth with a queen size bed. And then it's got two full two yeah. full heads on it. Yeah, yeah, with showers and everything. So nice, nice salon. It's a big You've never boat. been on my boat. I don't before. think I've ever been on it. I'll have to have you over there. Yeah, yeah, You'd be surprised. You get in it, and it's almost as big as yours when you're inside. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she so, said. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So what trips have you guys done? You've done St. Augustine, we've done I know. The, we've done the Keys. Um, we've been down to Miami and Fort Lauderdale. We've done, we go to, we go to St. Augustine all the time yeah. because it's a three and a half hour, three, three and a quarter hour And it's hour so trip. nice. You and literally pull trip. in and you're right downtown St. Augustine. You're right there. So, uh, we've spent Christmases there, New Year's there. Same here. Uh, the light of, night of lights, they yep. run for a month or whatever. That's right. Is, I don't yeah. know how many lights they have. Beautiful. Millions. Beautiful. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun. I mean, I'll tell you what, yachting is the most fun thing I've ever done. I wish I would have started doing it earlier. However, <clears throat> you can afford the boat, but you better afford to keep it because <laughs> the maintenance, it, is, the the... <laughs> maintenance is outrageous. I had, Matter uh, of fact, if you listen carefully right now, you can hear the cha-ching. So. Something's breaking on my boat right now. So I have, so we uh, have six air conditioners on ours. I don't know how many, so four, six. I got four. So we got six. So I had to replace one just uh, a couple months ago, $11,000 for a new air conditioner. I replaced two for this one, week. For one. It's stupid. Yes. It's stupid. And it's a constant battle because you're using salt water to keep them cool. It's ridiculous. And salt water is the most corrosive. <laughs> Might as well put acid into it. <laughs> Right. Um, but that's neat. And that's obviously how we've met. And we've got a lot of neat people on our, yeah, on, do. our on our docks. Um, yeah. and, uh, I do think we probably have the best Marina, uh, amenities as anyone in I Daytona agree. because plus you know, our view, I mean, you look out your boat yeah. and you've got, you got water all the way around you. Right. Yep, yep. So it's spectacular. Yeah. But, and you can see people going up and down the slingshot in downtown Daytona. Absolutely. <laughs> and the fireworks right there <laughs> yep. too. So we get it all. That's good. So look, so what's the best advice you could give to anyone looking to build wealth? Um, which obviously is probably a lot to do with real estate. Number one, we've talked about, but number one, debt is the enemy of wealth. So if you can put off a lot of the luxuries that you like in life, don't buy a boat. Are opulent. Don't buy a yacht, whatever you do. <laughs> Not until you're already rich. All right. Yep. Definitely don't do that. But live below your means, save money, invest in things. If you're not a good investor, I'm going to give you the best advice you could have. Buy real estate. Yep. And then put the rest of your money in an S&P 500. Because every financial planner, and there's some ones you can get a good financial planner, you'll make more money than the S&P. But if you don't have one or you don't trust them or you just don't know who to choose, put it in the S&P. You'll average 11.8%. Okay. Yep. That's going to be, and every financial advisor gauges themselves against the S and P. So yep. if they gauge themselves against the S and P, 
why don't I put my money in the S and P and I have no fees? Yep. So I put a lot of money in the S and P. I do. I do have uh, Nvidia. Okay. I yep. do have some Google. I got some Apple. I sure. got. You know, I've got some stocks too, but that's, you know, that's my play money I yeah, can yeah. play with. But you need to have, if if you have a 401k, even if your company doesn't match, max it out. Max out your 401k. Yep. Your you IRA. have so many, and your IRA. So if you're self-employed, you better set up a SEP or some type of IRA. You can't continue to spend money and you should write a check to your IRA or your 401k every paycheck. That's how you save money. Save 10 to 20% of your savings per month. Um, and if you can't do that, you're living beyond your means. Yep. Or get a second job and make more money. Yeah. I love the people that are uh, complain about the money they make, but they work 40 hours a week. And my whole thing on that, and don't get me wrong, obviously I've, I've, there's times that I only work that now, but when you're first building and it was probably similar to you when you first started building your firm, I mean, you weren't the, when it, Oh, it's five o'clock. Oh, I gotta go home. Like it's, you got to bust your I've butt rarely, and build what you have. I've rarely been the type of person to work a 40 hour week. Yep. Uh, as I've gotten older, I do work a few less hours, but since business is slow, I mean, I do what I'm telling you to do. Yep. I'm, I'm working, I'm working 50 to 60 hours a week right now. Same. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm running two shows on Saturday and a show on Sunday and I'm working 10 hour days during the week. So I'm putting in the hours, but I'm not afraid to, because what else am I going to do? Yeah. What, what, else, what can I do? And what am I going to do? If I'm not working, I'm just spending money. Correct. So why not go out and make money and and help more people? And if you're not making enough money in what you're doing, reevaluate how you're doing it or get into something that's going to make you more yeah. money. But nothing that makes you money will not come with risk. Yep. That's, it's not going to do it. It's huge. You, yep. That's very good. So listen, so how does everyone find you? I know you got a few different websites yep, as far as the it's show. It's easy and to reach me. Uh, uh, I've got a direct phone number that you can call or text 407 250 nine one four four or you can go yeah. to my website at we bring you uh you can check my youtube page out bruce woodburn the lone arranger uh i also i uh, have a, a podcast on spotify and iheart radio uh just punch in my name and you'll see all my podcasts and uh i'm going to share this one on my youtube page as well awesome well, that yeah. sounds good. Thank you, Jason, that, for allowing me out and the, your guests. We got a lot accomplished today. We lot. had a lot of fun, too. The next one, maybe we'll do on one of our boats. Let's do it. Why don't we do that? All we, right. We might be able to do that. I think we can do it. We got <laughs> to get Steve <laughs> we to figure Steve. out the sound system. Steve, yeah. yeah. So huh? that's good. Perfect. Well, right. thank you so much for being on here. And we'll probably put on there, uh, again, his website and phone number and stuff like that. Thank you for that. And you do... Uh, you service the whole country? Anywhere you want to buy in the United States of America. Got it. So, um, I mean, this is definitely someone I trust. And I'll tell you, I mean, the business owners traditionally is always the hardest ones to be able to get financing. Mm -hmm. we He's got a business you owner and he, you know, this is what he does. So we got you covered. Cool. Well, perfect. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Bruce. Thanks, Jason. Right. Appreciate Thanks, guys. it. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button and get notified each time a new one comes out. We'll see you next time.